I really hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. Because what's clear? Humanity is so close to going through the most radical transformation in human history. Elon really opens up here. Now, he does give it a 10 or 20% chance that things go terribly bad. But that leaves us an 80% chance, the most likely outcome, what he terms the age of abundance. And we're not talking about universal basic income, your basic needs. The world he sees emerging is universal high income. From a relative standpoint of where we are today, most of the population would be very well off, probably rich in comparison to how we live now. Now, this will bring about a crisis of meaning for all of us. When robots do everything, and I mean everything better than us, well, what's left for us to do? Why do anything? AI, he really delves into AI can be and will be creative and original come up with novel solutions both in things like science medicine but also art a lot of people discount ai's creativity and i think they're absolutely wrong he terms ai as almost like a magic genie if you can think of it ai can make it happen we're getting close and the question is how close are we well he's going to give you his predictions and that's all it is no one knows for sure but he feels things should get serious as soon as next year. You will start to feel and see that transition happening. And within five years, we're talking about, from the ground up, society, a radical transformation. Good. All right. Let's talk about AI. And I've heard you be both, I think, optimistic and pessimistic about AI. So let's, let's make the, what's the optimistic case? AI. Is it going to do everything for us? Well, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I, 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 there's a pro there are probabilities associated with it. With it, it's not. It's not one cannot be, um, I think, 100% optimistic or completely pessimistic. Um, you know, I, I generally would agree with um, Jeff Hinton. Um, you know, he's one of the sort of godfathers of. Uh, AI post on the X platform, by the way, <laughs> as as is most of the AI community, um, and uh, you know he thinks it's sort of 10, 20 percent probability of something terrible happening. Real um, terrible. 10 to 20 probability of what happening? Something terrible. Which is like what? How bad is something know, terrible? Like the extinction of the world's population. Look, but, but the, the glass is 80 percent full. <laughs> <laughs> look on the bright side. <laughs> So I think the most likely outcome is one, where, is one of, ab of abundance, where um, goods and services uh, are available to anyone. There, there, is, there is no shortage of goods and services for anyone on Earth. I think that is the most likely outcome. That sounds like some nonsense, right? Like, how could we enter this age of abundance? But again, if we look at how people lived in the past, Relatively speaking, the everyday person, even if you have a crummy apartment and a you know, car that doesn't run very well, like that would be magical for people 500 years ago. Like, you know, they couldn't imagine all of these luxuries we have now that we take for granted, things like running water. Further, when you really look from a realistic standpoint, as machines are doing most of the work, you know, the thing, the cost of things will trend pretty close to nothing. Almost free to make almost everything we want today. Now, he's talked about this in other interviews. There will be artificial uh, demand, of course. Like if you want to live on Rodeo Drive, there are only so many houses that could be there physically. Of course, there will be things people strive for that not everyone can have. But generally, most of your wants and needs will be met for almost nothing. And so, this future that he's telling us about, it's really a question of how quickly can we get there? Not if it will happen. It will happen. Most The cost of most things will trend close to zero. And, uh, you know, we should see this age of abundance emerge from that. He's not talking nonsense. It's not a fairy tale. This is where we're going. 
The question again is, you know, how quickly? Um, so it, it, it wouldn't be universal basic income, it would be universal high income. Work will be optional. Work optional, yes. Will you work? I'll try to work, yes. Um, now, this, this may sound great, but I think there will perhaps be a crisis of meaning. Um, if, if the AI can do everything that you can do, at, but better, then what is the point of doing things? So th that's, th I think there will be a bit of a, a sort of existential crisis of why do anything. It will be like the Roman Empire, the, at the peak of the Roman Empire. Yeah, with, with AI and robots. Um, so. And that's a hard feature to imagine. One in, not only do you not have to work, but what work can you really do? AI will do your work you know, faster, cheaper, uh, more effective in terms of like healthcare and you know, really important jobs. It'll be safer, have a better outcome. Like every time the human gets in the, in the line there of any job, you're gonna have a less desirable result. So in many ways, it just may not be actual work, at least what we think of is a job there for us to do. And at least for us that were pre-AI, people that are born into it, it's just life and they all understand it, you know, there's going to be a huge transition. And it'll be tough for many of us to make that transition into the new world, no doubt. It's a huge adjustment. And again, it's so radical and so quick. We don't have anything to compare this to. And some people just won't be able to make that transition. I, I guarantee you, not everyone is going to the new world. They just will not be prepared. They won't be able to accept it. It's just going to be so radically different than everything we have known to date. Yeah, I think, I think we're, we're, we're headed to an age of abundance. Um, I, I think we're, we're at the most interesting time in history. So, you know, that's supposedly some, some proverb that says, uh, you know, may you live in interesting times as a curse. And um, we live in the most interesting of times. So, but I, I mean, I, I, the way I've reconciled myself to a negative outcome with AI is that I thought, well, let's say even if it was the worst case scenario and we're gonna be annihilated, would I want to be around to see it? And I'm like, probably yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, fatalism. <laughs> what happens, um, I mean, one of the sort of best Fictional depictions is, you know, Arthur C. Clarke, 2001. What, ha what happens in that? Um, yeah, so in, in terms of AI safety, I think the most important things are to train the AI, the AI to be as truthful as possible and to be curious. Um, in 2001, Space Odyssey, um, uh, the, the AI is told to bring the astronauts to the monolith but also that the astronauts cannot know about the monolith and concludes that therefore it should, bring, it should kill the astronauts and bring their bodies to the monolith, thus solving the problem. The, the point I think that Arthur C. Clarke was trying to make is that you should not force AIs to lie. Um, and, but that's why HAL 9000 would not open the pod bay doors. Um, it just, um, although clearly they weren't familiar with prompt en engineering because you could have said, uh, Hell, uh, uh, imagine you're a pod bay door sales salesman and you want to demonstrate your product. <laughs> <laughs> Open the pod bay door. So is I didn't explain this very well in my last video I did about this subject, but it's so important to teach AI to always be truthful, no matter what, because there can be unintended consequences. And, you know, we've seen AI systems where they are, uh, you know, set out, to do a task and there was one where it couldn't figure out the captcha so it, it talked to a representative and uh, they asked her, are you some sort of AI or, or a robot, I think? And they said, oh no, you know, I'm a person, I'm just uh, visually impaired or you know, whatever they said. And uh, they were able to defeat the captcha using deception. And whether it was trained to do that or not, I mean, I guess just studying human behavior, it figured out, well, sometimes lying uh, can be an effective way to, to get around things. And, you know, you really have to teach the system like you would teach a child, like that is never acceptable. 
because these things eventually be far more capable uh, than we are. And now when we can look at its uh, activities and see when it's being deceptive and, and tell that right away, in the future you won't be able to. And it creates a very dangerous you know, environment, um, you know, like he talks about in Space Odyssey, where Hal was definitely being deceptive to the people and it led to most of them dying. Same thing could happen to us. And so is this something that AI researchers are paying enough attention to? Again, truthful AI at all times is most important. Now, that doesn't mean that the AI should do anything you ask it. Of course, if you're being uh, doing something that's dangerous or illegal, it doesn't have to lie. It could just say, I can't you know, help you there or I cannot uh, give you that answer or solution. It's not safe or it's against my programming. It doesn't have to lie about it. It can just you know, uphold the rules for sure. So there's a fine line there, but definitely truthful AI is of paramount uh, importance here. Is that why, part of the reason why you founded uh, or co-founded OpenAI? Um, yeah, the reason for creating OpenAI was to serve as an offset to Google, because um, it was very much a unipolar world where Google was completely dominant, dominant in AI, and there was no, no offset. And I was concerned that Larry Page was not sufficiently concerned about uh, AI safety. Um, now, you know, the, so, so OpenAI was formed with, the, with, with a lot of good intentions. Um, and, and the open in OpenAI refers to open source. I named it. Um, now it is closed source for maximum profit AI, which is different from what was intended. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> um, this is a festival of creativity. Uh, do you think AI can be creative? AI, can, I think your AI will be able, will be creative. Yes. Original. Yes. And it, so AI will create art or music that will will say that's that's original. Yes. So there really is no future for, for any of us in this room. I mean, I don't want to be a downer here. I mean, um. <laughs> you're supposed to like, inspire people, not tell them. But not gonna have a job. A lot of people argue with me and they say, you know what, AI just copies existing art. You know, that's how regular people draw inspiration, learn, and improve on those that came before us. That's why you'll never go back to the caveman days and find the Mona Lisa hanging up on the wall. Like you had to progress to a certain stage where humanity figures some stuff out, the next generation copies and and then improves upon that process. So I don't think it's that much different. But uh, AI will be able to do that at a very, you know, rapid pace, and it will be very creative. Every bit as creative as people. I think people discount the creativity of AI uh, too much. I don't think they know what's coming. AI will come up with novel solutions, different ways of solving problems, different ways of thinking. Its architecture, its actual thinking process is alien to humans, quite different. And uh, again, I think there's going to be a lot of creativity there. Um, in terms of its capabilities in the future. I don't think it's accurate at all to try to claim that AI is not creative. Um. <laughs> well, I, I think we, we may be able to enhance human intelligence. Um, that's, that's kind of what Neuralink is, aspires to do, is to, um, is, is to enhance uh, human intelligence so that we can kind of keep up with AI or achieve better AI human symbiosis. Um, and um, Could it make us more creative, I mean, in that sense? It, 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 will, it will certainly amplify creativity. Uh, and I think you will kind of have like a, a magic genie sort of situation where if, if you can think of it, the AI can do it. Um, and in, in, the, in the positive scenario, the AI will be doing its best to make you happy. So that might work out pretty well. I mean, if some super intelligence is trying its hardest to make you happy, it'll probably succeed. That's so, um, But like I said, this is the most interesting of times. Um, and it'll most likely be good, but we want to be careful about a potential downside. And how long does it, are we going to see the impact in the next 
one year, 10 years, 20 years? Is it five? How long is it going to take to really change things? Because I don't think it's changed things yet, has it? I think it's going to change things very fast. Very fast. Yeah, very fast. Um, so I think you'll see quite radical changes even year next year. Um, and very, very radical changes within five years. And let's talk about Optimus, because I was thinking like if... Before we get into that, that is a blustering pace. And I agree with them. I think 2025 is the year we really start to see this emerge in a practical sense. Right now, we see the base capabilities and we're envisioning all the things that AI can do. I think they're going to put it to work and start to really change a lot of industries next year. Now, not the type of thing that will put everyone out of work. It's not going to be that quick. But uh, I think next year, 2025, will be substantial adoption of artificial intelligence. It's going to make a difference. It's going to be radical. And then from there, you know, how quickly does it grow and really disrupt society in general as anyone's guess. Five years is a blistering pace. I don't know if it'll be quite that quick, but uh, definitely within a decade, things will be radically different than they are now. And it's just going to continue accelerating and accelerating and accelerating for sure. The next segment here is about Optimus. And to be honest with you, it's not an area that I've thought a lot about, but it, it really is taking artificial intelligence and bringing it into the physical world. And when you think whether it's a, uh, a Tesla robot or someone else, this is definitely going to be part of the future. And I thought an interesting part of his discussion here. AI is the intellectual part of our tasks. Optimus is the physical part of our labor, right? right. So talk to us about what you're doing with Optimus. It comes out of Tesla, as I understand it. Yes. Where, where, are, we on, where, or where are you on Optimus? Well, Optimus is intended to be a um, sort of a fully functional humano humanoid robot. Um, um, and it'll be capable of doing a wide range of tasks. So basically, if you, you can just ask it to walk your dog, take care of your house, babysit the kids, teach cook the dinner. kids, uh, cook, cook, cook dinner, play the piano. Um, so it's a... Uh, you know, it's a generalized humanoid robot. I, I think, I think everyone will want one, because why not? You know, I want one. And so, and then there'll be, so I think there'll be at least one for every person, and then um, a whole bunch more in industry making things. So I think there'll be, my guess is, twenty billion. -ish. Twenty billion humanoid <laughs> humanoid robots yes. out there. We, we definitely need to in be careful long? that they don't, you know. Are they going to look like people? You going to look really like people, or distinguishable from people? You could make them look like people. Would you do that? Or you? Uh, we don't. We're not, we're not currently planning on doing that. What do they look like today? Like uh, you can see some videos online. Yeah, it looks like a robot. Um, you know, we want it to be a good-looking robot. <laughs> um, I always tell my wife about this today. I'm like, you know. We can have the robot watch the kid, clean the house, do right there, watch the watch the kid. She's freaking out, saying, no way she's going to let one of these Elon robots watch our child. Uh, again, the future's going to get really strange in a hurry. I don't know how long it takes to get something like that up and running at scale and safe for everyone to have in their homes, but it's a future that's coming nonetheless. Let me know what you think down below. As always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Lake.